Hello guys, in this tutorial I will show you how to create a low poly game asset with Blender and import it into Unity. In this Blender project you see I created quite a few assets already. These are all parts of the new Unity low poly FPS game kit. And I switch now to my working view layer. In that I just have an empty collection and we can use this to create the model. We are creating a very simple one, a shovel. Ok, so let's get started, press Shift and A to create a cylinder. And I will use this for the handle of the shovel. It's low poly, so I use 8 vertices. And for the radius, let's say I use 3 cm. And the height I set to about 90 cm. I think that's realistic, perhaps even too much, we will see. Ok, I switch to edit mode and you see I have the transform gizmo enabled. That's really nice for moving around and rotating the mesh. And I enabled the X-ray mode so that when I select parts of the mesh, that the parts at the backside are selected as well. Now box select this part here at the bottom and extrude it. I press E to extrude and followed by Z to move it downwards along the Z axis. Then I press the S key and scale up this edge loop a bit and then I move it downwards. This will be the kind of metallic connector. And again I press S to make this part a bit thinner. And that's a good start I think and now we have to go ahead and add another cylinder for creating the grip or the handle at the top. I stay in edit mode when I'm adding the new cylinder so that this part is automatically added to the object and then I rotate it 90 degrees. For this you can use the gizmo and press the control key so that you are rotating in 5 degree steps. I move it upwards and then I scale it down along the X axis. Ok, that's the basic shape for the handle at the top. I increase the size a tiny bit and then I press Ctrl and the R key and move the mouse wheel carefully to add two edge loops. Then I bring these edge loops to the outside a bit by using the gizmo and then press S to scale them down to get this kind of shape. Ok, perhaps decrease the size of the first cylinder a tiny bit. Also this edge loop. And that looks quite nice. Ok, now we can add a plane to create the metal part of the shovel. I go to object mode again to add a separate object and press Shift and A to add the plane. Then I switch to edit mode and rotate this 90 degrees around the X axis. Then I scale it down. You can use the S key for that. Then find a matching position. I'm often switching between using the gizmo and the shortcut keys. Play around with it and find out what works best for you and in which case. Ok, again I press Ctrl and the R key to add edge loops. And for this part I add 3 in the Z direction. Use the mouse wheel and increase the number of edge loops. And when you click they are added and then we can select these vertices and move them down using the gizmo. Ok, looks good. Now I add another edge loop along the X axis and then I select this part here and move it backwards. And you see it is looking more and more like a shovel. Ok, I want this part to be a bit more round so I select these two vertices and scale them to the inside. And it's looking good, but it has to be a bit thicker. So I select the object, go to the Modifiers tab and add a Solidify modifier. I increase the thickness a bit more. Then I apply the modifier. And use the gizmo to move the part more to the front. Ok, the metal part is a bit too big, so I hover over it with the mouse cursor, then press L to select it, then S to scale it down and then I go to object mode and select both separate objects and press Ctrl and J to join them to one. Alright, in the end some tweaking, I scale it again and move it to the center.
And that was the modeling part, now let's go to texturing. I select all in edit mode and press U and then reset. That resets the UV islands and then I open up a new window. But the first thing I do is to assign a material. It has a simple texture with color squares, which are 16 pixels. You can see this here in the UV editor. Then I press A to select all the UV islands. Then I press S to scale them down so that their size is lower than 16 pixels. And then I can move them to a color square, for example this brown tone. And now the whole mesh is brown. But I want the part at the bottom to be metal, steel, so I have to select it here with the box select. And then move the UV islands for the selected parts, for the selected faces, to a gray color square. And that's it, the model is textured. <laughs> yes, really. And now we can go ahead and add some details, just for fun to make the model look more believable and realistic. Be sure that the scale and the rotation is applied, so the scale is set to 1 and the rotation to 0. And for adding the details, I go to edit mode, press K to activate the knife tool. And then I click to cut into the mesh. And when I added the last cut, I press the enter key. And add again another cut to connect these vertices. And then I use the gizmo to move this inner vertex a bit to the inside of the mesh. And this looks like a cut like splintered wood, but it's a bit too big so I select the vertices and press S to scale them down. And that's it, we created a low poly shovel that we can export now to Unity. And you know what, I will add it to my low poly FPS game kit. Before we export, let me rename the object to shovel. And then with the object selected, go to file export FBX. Select the target directory, which is my Unity project. And I have a preset for exporting, but we go through the options. We export the selected objects, just the mesh, and don't forget to check apply transform so that the scale in Unity is set to 1. For low poly objects set the smoothing to face. We don't have animations or an armature, so we have to set a name. And that's it, we can press export FBX. And then I open Unity and you can already see the shovel in the folder environment. Okay, in the importer options we can uncheck animations because we don't have any. And then I assign a material that is just a default material with a high roughness and with a texture assigned that I used in Blender. Here you see it, the texture with the color squares is added to the albedo slot. Okay, now we can drag the shovel into the scene. Looks good, it is facing forward and before I change the rotation, I assign a box collider. You can also use a mesh collider, but for this simple object, a box collider should be fine. Just that the player can collide with the object and is not walking through it. Okay, after adding this, I drag the game object into a folder called prefabs. This is like a template and you can reuse it then. When it is a prefab, you can always drag it from the prefabs folder into your scene. And when you change a prefab, all the instances, the game objects that are based on this prefab, are changed as well. So I can delete now the game object from the scene, then drag it into the scene again from the prefabs folder. And now I can find a good location here in the level. Okay, now start the game and you see we have a new game object in the low poly FPS game kit. So tell me, isn't it just great to be a game developer?
Oh, and if you would like to change a color after importing the mesh, then just go back to Blender and move, for instance, these islands to a different gray tone, like this one. Looks better, to be honest. Export the FBX again with the same settings. Open Unity and here we go. Okay guys, I really hope you like this tutorial for creating game assets with Blender for Unity. I will bring two assets to the Unity Asset Store. One is the Low Poly FPS Game Kit and the other one will be the environment without the FPS features. It will be a Low Poly Desert Pack. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Support me by being my patron and I see you soon in the next one here on JNM.